You're listening to Comic Reflections, episode 168. I'm your host, Nicholas Prom. And I'm the hairy half-human, Jeff Barnhart. <laughs> <laughs> Comic Reflections is brought to you by Rhymes with Geek. You can find our show, plus many other cool podcasts like the all-new Anti-Fanboy, Feed It Comics, and the Two-Headed Nerd at rhymeswithgeek.com. Como Comic Reflections is also available on backissueheroes.com the home of classic comics on the web. And if you enjoy our show, please subscribe to us on either iTunes or Stitcher. Okay, we're doing Tor. Tor and more Tor. Yes, <laughs> the bulk of this episode will be devoted to Tor, uh, Joe Kubert's uh, late Golden Age creation. Um, the We are looking at several issues of uh, DC's uh, Bronze Age reprint series of, of these uh, 1950s comics. Mm-hmm. Um, all of these stories were originally published by uh, St. John. Uh, in the sure, I'd never heard of in before. The, in the early 50s. But you did some research on this. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. yeah. And it's interesting that a, many of the stories we'll talk about were originally published, were first published, as you say, in 3D. Mm-hmm. And the 3D pro- comic books were invented by Joe Kubert. Hmm. He began that craze, and it started at St. John. Wow, um, it you know it it was a short lived craze, and thank God because of eye strain, and mm-hmm. it hurts my eyes trying to read three D comics. And these obviously were were rate formatted and printed in uh, regular comic books, so we mm-hmm. can actually appreciate them. Um, but yeah, let's begin. Um, uh, we're looking at tour number three of the this is the DC reprint series from the seventies. So let me be clarify that. Um, and the lead story is called Isle of Fire. Uh, a reprint from uh, Tor number three, the St. John version, from May of 1954. And this story was written and drawn by Joe Kubert. Okay. Um, Tor is kind of bored. And so, hey, let's go to the Isle of Fire. One of us over there. So, Fire? Yeah. So <laughs> he goes over there and gets attacked by a Kraken, um, I guess, or a giant squid. And um, he kills, well, he injures grievously the giant squid, and the giant squid is attacked by other sea monsters, and it's pretty darn cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Lots of great prehistoric creatures mm-hmm. in this, and uh, Hubert, one of his great strengths was drawing animals. Um, yeah. You know, they don't look like, mo- well, they the, the proportions and the way they're rendered just looks... They look realistic. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm trying to say. Right. Um, That's pretty nifty. All right, so he goes to the Isle of Isle of Fire, and um, the Isle of Fire is ruled by these bald, you know, eight foot men or seven feet tall, whatever. Mm-hmm. And they're hoarding it over these regular people, mm-hmm. you know, just your average caveman. Mm-hmm. And. Um, well, Tor does what Tor does best, and he kills one of them, <laughs> and uh, um, and the people love him for saving them. So they're enslaved by these people. Supposedly, it was just, it was just a nice little island. All of a sudden, and the fire um, volcano blew up, and they had to leave. And they came back, and they got enslaved by these people who lived near the fire. Yeah. So they call and, them firemen. Mm, and uh, the firemen uh, sacrificed regular folks to their uh, god in the volcano. Mm-hmm. And, spoiler, there's a big old snake in there. Right. Um, yeah. It's really well drawn. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, he saves this uh, young blonde girl, and she is fetching in her caveman outfit. Uh, yeah. Or cave girl outfit. Yeah. And uh, I think that's why people like cave people, those cave girls. Yeah? Yeah. Because, you know, they're going to be dressed scampily because, you know, they're going to be wearing ball gowns in sure. prehistoric times. So then they get attacked by the evil fireman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. It was a... Uh, I don't know. One, the, the blonde girl commits suicide instead of being cast into the um, pit of fire. She jumps. What? And this freaks out the main dude. And the um, main dude is really 
befuddled and Torg pushes him over the side. Yay! And so he dies. Nice. But she landed on a precipice or something, and so Tor is able to rescue her. Yeah. Uh, Tor, we must add, has a pet monkey. Named Chi-Chi. Yeah. And Chi-Chi finds the girl. Yeah. So Tor goes down. Oh, here's a big snake. Whoopsie doodle. So he <laughs> fights him. And, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they, um, and, and I guess it was a god or something, because when he destroys the snake, the island blows up, but he escapes with all the people, mm -hmm. which was only about eight of them. Right. Yeah, so. Well, because the firemen kept throwing them all into the, the, the thing. Mm -hmm. You know how but, many there used to be. Yeah. Um, um, so there's a backup story. It's called Danny Dreams. And where's my notes? Um, this is a reprint from Tor, the St. John series, uh, number five, from October of 1954, and written and drawn, again, by Joe Kubert. And it's about a kid dreaming about a prehistoric world, and yeah. it's interesting. Yeah, it is. Um, they're in a huge um, storm at sea on a, on a uh, rickety old raft. Now, in the dream, he's amongst a tribe of cavemen. Right. Um, let's see. Something happens. And why is that burning? I don't oh, know. lightning hits to the raft. They're in a storm, then they're attacked by sea creatures who eats up everybody except for Danny Dreamer. And um, he washes a, uh, a shore, a place, uh, an island, and he's in a land of pygmies, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Yeah, and the most interesting thing about him is when he speaks, he deafens them. Yeah, and because uh, he's a giant kind of compared to them. Well, it's not just that; is that they're very quiet. For some reason, it's got to be quiet. Yeah. So um, I didn't understand that. So. It, you know, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, it's just a comic book. Just go ahead and relax. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, but they've got a bigger pygmy. He's a big guy, and then he eats the little pygmies or something. <laughs> I'm not sure what he does. He just beats them up or kills them. So, and so he tells the little pygmies to put rocks in their ears so that they won't be deafened by his voice. And so Danny confronts the big pygmy and starts yelling at him. And the guy goes nuts, and he runs away or something. Oh, he kind of dies. Oh, okay. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, why not just, hey, stick your fingers in here? That's, that'd be better than rocks. So. Yeah, yeah. But it does serve another little point uh, in the close of the story. Because he wakes up and, oh, here are some pebbles. Gosh. It's, uh, and he and little trees. He wonders, was yeah. I really dreaming? Yeah, it looks like cattails to me. Yeah, it's like, was I a man who dreamed he was a butterfly or a butterfly who dreamed he was a man? Where's Remember that, that from? It's Chinese stuff. Oh, interesting. Yeah. There's a cool house ad for the very, very short-lived Man Bat uh, series. Mm -hmm. Only ran two issues, but Sturdy Steve Ditko did the art on both of them. And <laughs> the number one, the first issue of that series, that's how number ones go, yeah. um, <laughs> yeah. um, is the only example of Ditko drawing Batman. Ooh, okay. So, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. All right, now we got the next. Uh, I don't even know what the name of this one is. This is Tor or something? Well, I'll I have the credits, so I'll okay, help you. Thank you. Um, there's a one-page editorial, and it features Joe Kubert introducing a story. Um, he does that again as well. Yeah, that, I like that the, he's kind of featured in the book, but this one pager is actually from a different issue than the story that follows it. So that's why I'll, I'll give credits for that. Now, this is from uh, the one pager. Introduction from Joe Kubert is uh, from One Million Years Ago, number one, from September of 1953. And I think that was just a one shot, like one or two issues, I think, uh, that, that series anyway. Um, but then that immediate, and that was written and drawn by Joe Kubert. And then the lead feature is called Black Valley, and it's a reprint from uh, the St. John Tour series, number three, from May of 1954. And it was written and drawn by Joe Kubert. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I'm not sure why Joe Kubert wants, has to have an introduction to these things. And, I mean, the comic book readers, oh, you know, we, we can hop in anywhere, you know. And, but it's kind of, he tells us how the earth, earth began and then, you know, ball of gas coming from the sun, you know. Yeah. 
Um, I don't know. I don't think it's vanity. I think it's just kind of fun and different. Um, maybe he's trying to make up for the fact that dinosaurs do not exist with humans. Yeah, probably. Although, I've always wondered, why does every culture have dragons? Right? You know? So, I don't know. But every, it seems like they all do. Yeah. Aztecs and Western Europe and Chinese and Japanese. Yeah. And it's just all, everywhere. Maybe it's, just, it's part of our um, racial memory that maybe at the dawn of man, there was some remnant of large reptiles or the reptiles that have remained being much bigger and that's where it comes from yeah that's you know some, that's, it's gotta be something like that but it's universal so yeah uh, um i just finished listening to and i've read this before uh the lost world by arthur conan doyle famous for sherlock holmes yeah and where they find dinosaurs living in south america and they go the author goes to extraordinary lengths to give a reason for them being there really? yes i think it's a first dinosaur with people story ever it's quite possible and they and i think the rock just remade it or was it the rock or i think it was at least I, made it a couple of years ago oh they didn't did they yeah. I, don't, I don't know i i'm on player i remember they did a journey to the center of the earth a few years ago yeah with uh oh god uh brennan fraser which i didn't see because it looked awful yeah i like brennan fraser but i think he's his his time is uh, come and gone. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, pretty cool. Um, that make a great um, kind of book, The Lost World, and sure. got some really great, cool characters. And yeah. one of the most interesting scientists you ever want to meet, the brawling, big, hairy guy. Who, who I remember the, the silent. I remember the silent film adaptation of that, and that that uh, I don't remember the character's name, but that Challenger, whatever his name was, I don't remember. Yeah. Challenger was it? Mm -hmm. Anyway, I remember that was in that movie too. So, mm -hmm. um, anyway, let's talk about Tor. You know, there's a lot of lost worlds of, you know, dinosaurs in comics, right. but um, this obviously taken back in the past. But uh, great two-page splash this story opens up with. Mm -hmm. Really great. So, yeah, we have cave girls looking cute, and but they have captured Tor, and the monkey's trying to. Uh, Get Chi Chi's trying to get him out. Yeah. Um. Yes, yeah, he. Oh, he comes up and he he sees Tor is just hanging around and says, "Oh, look at this! You know, these people are carrying a little girl." So he says, "What's going on?" And they're delivering the little girl to a spirit mountain or something. Yeah. Like that. And uh, so because that's what they have to do. So Tor says, "I'll take her," mm -hmm. and it turns out that. It's full of women, and they women were treated badly, so they went off and made them their own Amazon band. So they demand the um, girl offspring of the right. Uh, although, how are they having girl offspring without women in the other place? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Okay. That's maybe a they, book I should just relax. Yeah, basically. or maybe they borrowed women from another tribe. Who knows? Or maybe they had a few women in the back. So yeah, um, who didn't leave? You know, mm -hmm. we don't know all so, of it. So, so they're uh, treated badly, and they're about to kill um, Tor when a mm -hmm. saber-toothed tiger attacks. So, in a recurring theme with Tor, he kills a saber-toothed tiger and makes friends with the girls, and they come back. And they will talk with the men and get everything together, and everything's way really nice. Yeah. The end. <laughs> so, Yay. Yeah. Oh, cool. Trust. There's a there's a one page filler, um, talking about the Triceratops, and this uh, is probably the only non cubert thing that we're going to talk about, and at least in these issues, um, this is a reprint from uh, 3D Comics number two A, uh, from. Uh, Oh, excuse me, from October of 1953. Uh, Kubert wrote the type, but the art is by Russ Heath. Yeah. Very nice. Now, yeah. Triceratops, you know, it's always top five dinosaurs. Oh, yeah. But, um, love that. All right. He's now, probably in most people's top two or three, you know. Yeah. So. All right. I'm, I know Brontosaurus is, not a, is a patasaurus now, but. I I'll say Brontosaurus because a patasaurus is lame, and Brontosaurus sounds cool. Yeah. How can you have a Bronto burger without Brontosaurus? <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. So we have another tour story to talk about. And this is called Killer Man. Yeah. Uh, 
It's a reprint from 3D, 3D Comics number 2C from November of 1953, written and drawn by Joe Kubert. All right. It's a well. There's a hunchback serial killer in the caveman world. Yeah, he's just killing animals just for the because he was crippled in an accident, so he's going to cripple everybody else, the whole world. What a creep! Yeah, and apparently Tor is the only one who knows how to use his fist in this world. Because, <laughs> you know, oh. Well, he's the central figure. I love how he basically has the greatest mullet of all time. Yeah, you, <laughs> you know, because it looks front, like it, party it, in the back. it looks like it's pompadour in front and like <laughs> and party in the back. It's mm -hmm. great. Um, so, yeah, he fights him, and the, the killer man does a pretty good job against him. And he's it's so funny because his hunchback is real is all hairy. Yeah. So anyway, oh, well, I think it's a hunchback. I think a hunchback is actually. Flesh or something, and but I well, think yeah. that he's crippled, so his back is broken or something like that. Yeah, so. it's messed up. So, yeah. Um. So, I got a hunch. You're correct. Okay, so the guy gives up because Tor had been kicking his butt all day long, so, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Tor turns around and the guy's. Uh, He's going to sucker punch him, and Tor moves because Tor is wise to the ways of fighting. And, and the guy runs over the cliff and dies. Yay! And that's the end of it. Yeah. Okay, so... Okay. Um, here we go, Tor! Yeah, we've got another Tor. This is Tor, the DC Tor, number six. And uh, the lead story is called Cave Snake, which is a reprint from 3D Comics, number 2A. From October of 1953, written and drawn by Joe Kubert. Oh, okay. this is the one I couldn't find a name to. Um, all right, Tor is this. This is a great splash page. But oh, the it's problem excellent. is, is that Tor is just looking off to the side, but to his left, two Tyrannosaurus Rexes are fighting to the death, and it's super cool. But Tor cannot be bothered. I guess he sees us all the time. I don't know. <laughs> you know. I mean, look, he's a, I'm looking over here. Because you don't want to see the back of his head of him just like, wow, look at that. Yeah, you know, no, but, um, that wouldn't be a very good splash page. But yeah, it's kind of like, what are you looking at that's more interesting than this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. That's, that's a very good point. <laughs> the, um, my science fiction professor, I can't think of his name. I'll come to me later. Isaac Asimov. Yeah. <laughs> but he was talking, he's, he was great. And I uh, learned more about life. But he said, if you work at, um, Niagara Falls, and every day you had to drive past Niagara Falls, the the falls, yeah. to work. There'd be one day you wouldn't turn and look. Sure. Because it was got commonplace. Yeah. And even something as massive and great and as it, yeah. in Niagara Falls, and that's you know maybe trying to search rexes or on the, uh, fighting is not that big a deal. Yeah. Man, but it is so cool. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. But oh. I definitely grok where you're coming from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, that's another little science fiction reference. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> okay, um, Tor is mounting his own business and he falls into a cave and he's attacked by Harry Halfman. And Man. Uh, they How many happen. times has this happened to you? Right. <laughs> and so they said, We'll feed you to the snake god or whatever. And um, he says, Well, I'll go kill this thing if you let me go. I said, Oh, we'll let you go. So he. Fights against Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yeah, and in the cave. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, the, I don't know. The, was it Chi Chi? Or what yeah, the, yeah, the monkey, yeah. <laughs> he does a double take. He jumps up and holds his head. It's kind of. Yeah. In the serious thing, here comes he comes. He's doing something stupid. Right. It's actually endearing. Yeah. Normally, I hate comic sidekicks because they're not funny and they're annoying. Right. I'm but says Chi Chi's not a person, and we have this fascination with monkeys and how they can they have their human like gestures. I don't, I don't like monkeys and things either. I don't mean we, but like yeah. you and I, but like collectively, uh, society yeah. at large, mm -hmm. there's a fascination there. That's okay. why you see monkeys in so many things. So, mm -hmm. anyway. All right, um, so there's a huge fight, um, and of course, Tora wins. Oh, and he wins by throwing his axe or stone axe into a stalactite. Which 
falls down and impales the dinosaur. Yeah. Which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And he comes back and says, hey, got your monster for you. And says, oh, yeah, we'll let you go, but you can't leave. Ah, ha, ha. And so... And, and what is this, the Hotel by... California? Yeah, Jeez. right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he gets attacked by... Um... A big old snake, right? Yeah. And then he defeats the snake and the guy says, oh, you're right. I feel bad. So I'll let you go. Yeah. Okay. Have you seen this um, Shazam cupcake caper? Yeah, I think I... I mean, I know I've seen it, but it you want to talk about it? I mean, yeah. It's... <laughs> Oh, it's one of the Twinkie things, a Twinkie alert. Um, someone's stealing the cupcakes, and uh, what I thought was interesting was that Shazam just goes and he shows up and says, "Oh, we give up." <laughs> so that's <laughs> it. He doesn't have to punch anybody. Or yeah, but I love it. You know, Captain Marvel just shows up, and sometimes that's enough. Like, okay, I don't want to mess with well, you. I wouldn't. So, all right. Yeah. Oh, these are really well done. Man, the snake looks cool, too. Oh, back to Tori, yeah. Yeah. So here's a cool one-pager about the uh, the Pachycephalosaurus. Ooh, okay. I, I was even going to try that. <laughs> well, well, yeah. it is also uh, yeah, no, phonetically but, uh, mm -hmm. thrown in out for you. But um, the Pachycephalosaurus, let's see. Uh, it's just a one-page filler, and it's from tour number four from July of 1954. Written and drawn by Joe Kubert. But this is cool. Yeah. Those were those ones with the big bony head. Yeah. I, I heard a theory that they use a bony head for um, attacking. Yeah, you know, or like a co competition with females. They batter each other's heads together. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it's a pretty solid theory. I mean, mm -hmm. we don't know, but... Yeah. Lots of cool ads, house ads for stuff. Yeah, Trust yeah. Sam and Wiz comics. Yeah, and, what uh, you're looking at is all of the uh, the treasury editions that DC was putting out at the time. This is house ad. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a, on the, the, the opposite page is a house ad for the uh, Superman versus Spider-Man Treasury Edition, the Battle of the Century. This was a big deal. That's pretty cool. It was the first time Marvel and DC characters, you know, appeared together I, in a I comic. I always enjoy those. It was kind of cool when a... The first bunch of them, you know, first handful of them were really great. The first two uh, Superman and Spider-Man ones are great. The... Bat or Batman and the Hulk one is great. Mm -hmm. um, those are really fun. Yeah, I like the X Men and the Teen Titans one is good. I like it when and it doesn't have to be Marvel and DC, but if they deal with a known person, you know, Daredevil attacks um, a Spider Man um, villain or something. You know, sure. I, I don't like that. It, it makes life interesting. Yeah, because they they fight differently and this. Yeah, that's just yeah. cool. Well, and I think in comics it's like it should be commonplace that you're not just fighting the same bunch of guys and you never fight a guy that Batman fights or the Flash does. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's if you're living in the same world, the chances are that you would come across these people. And so I always like uh, you know stories where a villain uh, fights a hero that they don't normally yeah. you see them together. That is you know, interesting. Yeah. So. Yeah, I wish they do that on TV a lot. I don't know what they never do. So, but I don't, yeah. on TV, normally they don't fight recurring characters. I don't know. A team against. Uh, they had that general jerk off that was always following them. Yeah, uh, they could. He could go against Y Five O and um, who was the, the bad guy in Y Five O? Wang Fung or something. Like <laughs> Wang Fung. I have no idea uh, actually. Yeah, but um, yeah, but he was really cool. So yeah, it was awesome. Uh, yeah. I think you see that less on television because TV usually one show is is its yeah. own microcosm, its own universe. Mm -hmm. um, but it'd be cool if they did. Do but that. we're seeing more in television. You'll have different shows, even mm -hmm. running at the same time, that are a shared universe, like the Arrow and the Flash are now. And, and the there Marvel are, stuff. And, and there's yeah. there's other examples, but yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, so. Okay. So we got another tour story. Yeah. And <laughs> what? Um, and this one is called. Uh, Jeff, not no. Oh, I think uh, this is uh, just uh, called Fire. Yeah, that's what it is. And uh, this is from 3D Comics number 2A from October of 1953, written and drawn by Joe Kubert. Yeah. Um, some Torres is hanging around and he sees a. Uh, Triceratops with a Stegosaurus fighting. Yeah. And um, Triceratops wins. But it's kind of cool. Um, 
And then there's a huge fire. And he gets attacked by a turtle. <laughs> a giant yeah. turtle. And it looks rad. Mm hmm. The beak on this turtle alone is super cool. And the shell. Cuber yeah. did a great job. Yep. And, uh. So he kills him. <laughs> big surprise there. Um, but it's a big, cool fight. Yeah, it is. He uses his. He drowns it, I think, by tying his head and his tail together so he yeah. can't move. It's oh. kind of sad. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so Tor just solves all these problems by killing things. <laughs> <laughs> Which usually works. Uh, yeah, I, guess, I mean, you know. and it's caveman times. I mean, you yeah. kill to live. Yeah, I, I, you know, you're not going to negotiate with a Triceratops or a right. T Rex. Yeah, it's a different world. It's has different limitations, but also different possibilities. Mm -hmm. So, super well drawn. I was surprised you said this was late Golden Age. And yeah, I don't know. It could be late Silver Age. It's just really well done and yeah, um, sophisticated but and beautiful. Yeah, but it's quite a, a. It's it's different, and you can see how Kubert's stuff looked, you know, in the Silver Age, as compared to this, and it's very different. Hey, the guy, his career. I think spanned seven decades. Wow. And, you know, he was still working in comics in his 80s, and he was still getting better. I'd be lucky my life spans seven decades. Right? Yeah. Most of us would be lucky for that. But, um, so the next comic we've got, that's all uh -huh. of our tours for today. The next comic we've got to talk about, uh, boo, but it also yeah. bears a specific and maybe sad distinction. Um, it's our last non-Marvel or DC book that we will talk about maybe ever on the show. Wow. Um, we are transitioning. We're moving. We're going to be, you know, I've told you, and I'm sure I've mentioned on the show before, we're going to be moving away from doing these single issues and, and into what Spencer and I do on the other show during the week is uh, talking about the Showcase Presents or Marvel Essential volumes. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. I mean, it's okay. I think that we'll get better show numbers. Because when it's, I always enjoy talking about things outside of Marvel mm -hmm. and DC. I think it's important. But like whenever we have done episodes that were like, oh, it's a spotlight on the Thunder Agents or a spotlight on Charlton or Gold mm -hmm. Key or whatever, the numbers take a dive. Huh. The niche of our show seems to be like, oh, they it's, they people care about Marvel and DC. That's a shame. It is because there's other good things out there. But um, I don't know. And I don't know. Plus, the bad things are interesting in their own right. Well, like, yeah. And, I don't know, it's actually, sometimes the bad ones are more fun to talk yeah. about than the good ones, yeah. because it's, it's easier to criticize and to praise. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's interesting, though, because even one of the things that I'm doing with Spencer right now is uh, we're doing The Walking Dead, which mm -hmm. is kind of a change, because normally we just do classic stuff. Yeah. And, you know, I just said, ah, okay, we'll do that. Um, and actually, even that, the numbers kind of dip. And I figured we would be getting big numbers on those. Hmm. But um, I think it's the niche is really it's of our show is, has been defined as talking about old Marvel and DC stuff. All that right. seems to be what people care about. Okay. Well, that's well, always right. Give the people what they want, and that's what we're going to do. But one last time, we'll have something from uh, Gold Key Comics. And this is Yosemite Sam, number 13. Um, I found no credits. This was not indexed on comics.org, but I have. But so we'll have just story titles to talk about. The lead's feature is called "What Fur." Uh, okay, you send me Sam's after old grizzly for five hundred dollar reward, and uh, oh, I don't know. Is this okay? The greatest cartoons ever made were the Warner Brothers cartoons. They okay. were fantastic when they were made. Um, in their golden age, nothing can compare. They kind of, in the 60s, they got that, oh, Sylvester versus Speedy Gonzalez, and they became lame. Hmm. And after that, anything Bugs Bunny sucks. Hmm. The whole, no, there's nothing good. And hmm. the, the comics are bad. I think there's a cartoon strip, and I think that's bad. Yeah. Um, the stupid movie... Um, the they are remaking Space Jam. Ugh. Was bad. Gross. And oh, and they've done another one, too. They did one with Brendan Fraser, actually. Oh. I can't remember what it was called, but... Uh, stupid Tune or something like that. I don't, know. So, I don't uh, think that's what it was, but... <laughs> that's what it was. But, um, <laughs> but here's the thing. 
and it, it's funny. I think you can. We may have mentioned this before. I know we've talked about it. I'm not sure we did on air, but comics to animation is a medium transition that works. Mm -hmm. But animation to comics, no, it just doesn't work. No. It, it, it's no good. Yeah. Um, even. Yeah. There's no example of, that I could think of that's good. Uh, you could almost say, oh, well, what about the Duck comics from, from Dell and Gold Key? But the really, but Uncle Scrooge and Huey, Dewey, and Louie, they appeared in the comics first. Yeah. They didn't appear in animation until much later. Yeah. Um, I can't think of a... Yeah. And either. so that's a tra example of, oh, it working, from transferring from comics to the medium of animation, but the reverse just doesn't fly. Oh, except for the Simpsons comics. They work okay. They work they're, okay. They're enjoyable. Yeah. Um, I always enjoy reading them. They're not as good as show, but they're all right. Yeah. And, and, but I'll take it. But that's... But, uh, I mean, but the Simpsons is always an exception to everything. So um, the I will give you that. Is a rule um, I feel that licensed property comics from like a television or movie or animation mm -hmm. tend to be very weak. And unfortunately, they, they are also often the gateway to comics for people. But the sad thing is, they're usually lousy comics, and then yeah. somebody might pick it up and never pick up a comic book again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this blows. Um, yeah. It just, they're after a bear, and I don't know, Bugs Bunny is being you know, crappy. And <laughs> I, I don't know. Oh, Sometimes... Bugs is meaner towards the beginning. Now, yeah. then he became, he had to be attacked for it. But here he is being kind of mean towards your Sammy Sam. And, uh huh. Um, you got this big bear, and I don't know. It's, God. And it's, it's lame jokes yeah. and uh, poor I, drawings. Yeah, I mean, it looks like the, the cartoons, but it's, it's just missing something. And I think it's also. The mistake is made of, oh, this is kitty crap, so I'll just write crap. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, they're lousy comics. I just noticed something. What's uh, that? A Flash Gordon patch. Man, I love that. And a Popeye patch. That oh, yeah. Cool. An advertisement yeah. there. Yeah. Caution. Budweiser powered. That's hilarious. Oh, uh, man. Not, people, when I was a wee lad in the <laughs> 70s, um, people use this all the time. Had patches on their stuff. Oh, too bad. Patch is kind of cool. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. Bugs Bunny turns into a... Uh, they capture the bear by Bugs being a female uh, bear. And they go into the cage and then... Oh. They need... <laughs> Bugs gets the bear to break out and attack... Um, um, Yes, I mean, Sam. Yeah, I don't. Know, it's just, it's just lifeless and bad. Okay. Do you even want to talk about the other stories in this? Because we can just say it sucks. Yeah, I don't. What the, did I? Say? Yeah. Although I enjoyed kind of the cleanup, Sam. Cause Sam, there's a the third story, and we'll skip the number two because it's dumb. It's bugs and bugs and see somebody Sam against a genie that you never see. Yeah, but uh, the third story is called the uh, Admiral Dude, yeah. and uh, Porky Pig and his girlfriend Petunia. They want to. It starts out. Sh they want to rent out Sam's pirate ship for like a an afternoon for her ladies' yeah. club. Mm -hmm. But and yeah. I always, I ever was always like, is he a cowboy? Is he a pirate? He's everything. Okay. So yeah, no matter what he does. So and he was a uh, British officer one time. Was he? Yeah. Oh, okay. And what else? He's uh, had quite a storied career. Yeah, he was a politician one time. Oh, was he? <laughs> yeah. He was I remember a, him being a Confederate soldier, too. Oh, I don't remember that. Yeah. Oh, and um, they saying, I want to kiss a baby. Give me a baby. Give me a baby. Yeah. <laughs> and then Bugs Bunny's a baby, of course, and he, and you see me saying kisses him, and, he's, and Bugs Bunny starts crying. Oh, the bad man hit me, so all the old ladies... Beat the crap out of Yosemite Sam. This is great. <laughs> See, this is what I like. These are good Yosemite Sam stories. Yeah. Um, this this one's... Okay, this one was the best of a bad lot. So, <laughs> Yosemite Sam's kind of... Oh, he's always yelling, and so he's kind of rough. So, 
They said, you're going to need to clean up. So he gets his hair done, and I don't know what he did. His, his mustache is waxed, and I don't know what's going on with his hair. They put it in curls or something. He looks yeah. stupid. Yeah, it looks stupid, but he looks cool with his... Um, his, like, outfit. admiral's outfit, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He keeps... He poked a girl in the rear with his mustache. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Which is kind of funny. Yeah, I think actually. That's kind, kind of, of like the height of this comic. Yeah. Um, they have a party at Petunia's house, and a burglar is already inside. Yeah, I'll, I'll rob this place. And look at that you know, poof of a admiral. I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> uh, so, um, as soon as Sam is drinking tea and it melts his mustache, oh, he's got to go up, and then he sees a burglar, so he hides underneath the rug. And sneaks up on the burglar and beats him up, and now he's a hero. So I don't know. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, I I enjoyed that. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen many Petunia Pig stories. Well, you know, she's just a very much a supporting character. Yeah. I mean, like Porky Pig had his cartoons, and I think yeah. Petunia was in uh, some it's of them. Kind of Porky Pig was not is very early. I saw one Porky Pig, he was a conductor on a train, and a, and a cow got in the way. <laughs> He's trying to get the cow out of the way. He says, you're the kind of cow that gives milk a bad name. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, funny. I haven't seen that one. Oh, man, that was great. And the sort of... I was, there were four adults and kids. Yeah, Wasn't and, it odd how so many of them have speech impediments, these characters? Porky Pig has that stammer. Sylvester has the lisp. Yeah. Oh, uh, Daffy too, I guess. Yeah, you got to make them sound different and get yeah. a speech impediment. Down. And I don't know, I was speech impediment myself, so I'm not offended. So okay. why not? It's funny. If you make me laugh, I'll be okay. So okay, but um, all right, this is pretty cool. I mean, um, I'm sorry to see non-Marvel DC stuff come. Right, the big two to, to go away. Yeah, but. Uh, all right, but yeah, that's how the dice rolls. Yeah. yeah, we'll see you in the funny pages.